we don't swing fast enough, the ball might just kind of pump here and not go far enough. Yeah. That, that was actually a really good shot. Get there. Uh, yeah, that was pretty that. good. <laughs> yeah. okay. I'll take that one. Hey golfers, Drew Mahold here with Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a master club fitter at Second Swing. Today we're at Les Bolstead Golf Course where Thomas actually recently broke the course record. Uh, we're playing some golf today. We thought we'd capture some video and some instruction from Thomas himself. Um, knowing me, I'm going to get myself into some funky situations out there. Uh, so Thomas is going to walk me through them and hopefully educate myself and the viewers uh, through some of these scenarios that you know maybe are common out there for golfers. I know some of the things I get myself into can I can relate with a lot of people out there. So Thomas, you're an instructor and a fitter. So um, you know we'll kind of go through anything. I mean, we might be in the trees, might be greenside, might be putting, might be off the tee, whatever it is. Um, but I'm excited for this, and you know, as someone again, course record holder, so this will be fun. Yeah, whether it's fitting related or whether it's instruction related, remember when you're on the golf course, the goal is to get the ball in the hole in the least amount of golf shots. Mm -hmm. Fitters at second swing can definitely help to get the ball, cause you to hit the ball further, hit the ball straighter, have better wedge game, have a better putting game, get the right launch angle, right spin rate. But at the end of the day, you're gonna still leave yourself circumstances on the golf course where you may be in trouble, you need to get yourself back out and play to give yourself a chance to save your par, or even make a bogey, but it's important to make sure that you minimize the damage. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk about a little bit about minimizing the damage a little bit today. We're gonna to hit some shots in the trees, we're gonna hit some shots around the green, some uneven lies, and even some basic chip shots that maybe we'd recommend to hit more of a bump and run rather than more of a mm -hmm. shot that would carry all the way to the green. So. We have some shots. We're going to take a look at how you would set up to hit a shot and how I would set up to hit a golf shot and see if we can find a way to get the ball in the hole faster. Yeah, anything to help me score a little bit better, I'd appreciate. <laughs> so uh, I'm ready to play some golf though. All right, well, let's take a look at some different circumstances. Oh my goodness. What? What? So hole seven at U of M Les Bolstads, par five. Sharp dog leg to the right. Now they've moved these tees over the last couple of years that made it a little more difficult for the bigger hitters. I've still got to make sure I can get my ball to go cut to the right because if I hit the ball left here, I'm cut out. I, I won't have a second shot at the green. So I have to visualize how I am going to hit this shot to generate that little bit of fade. So I need to open up my stance a little bit and cut across it. So I am going to visualize here about a 20, 25 yard cut that's going to start on the left, curve to the right. Part of my pre-shot routine is as I'm walking in, I'm walking in with my body open. So my body's open, my club face is open, my shoulders are open, my feet are open. And naturally now all I'm trying to do is swing down my uh, feet and shoulder line, leave the club face open to that, and then hit a big cut. Okay, Drew, we've got a 35 yard pitch shot here. One thing we do notice is you've got to assess your lie. Mm -hmm. So we do notice that the ball is quite far above your feet. I notice you gravitated towards your 58 degree wedge. Just keep in mind, if you are leaning on an upslope, what's gonna happen is it's gonna turn that 58 degree wedge into possibly even a 68 degree wedge. Mm -hmm. So you can hit this club. You just remember you gotta swing just a little bit harder with this particular club. Mm -hmm. Or you can always have your hands forward a little bit. The other option, obviously, is to hit a club with a little bit less loft on it too, just knowing that you're going to be adding loft. It's important to make sure when we're hitting the shot that we still turn through the ball, because if we don't quite turn through it, you're going to come up a little bit short. Okay. But, but it's a pretty pretty straight, straightforward shot. You just got to make sure you commit to it. Now, when you're hitting on an upslope like this, um, is there anything you do with your weighting on your feet in particular? I kind of go with the slope. Okay. So. I, l I like to kind of, if I have a ball above my feet or below my feet, I like to kind of slant my body with that, with that slope. Okay. Same thing here is I will kind of slope, slope a little bit back with it, but I will just make sure that I do know that there's more loft on this club and I need to swing yeah. a little bit harder. Okay. So it'll probably jump up in the air yeah. and fly a little It might come out it. almost like a flop shot, but. Correct. Yeah. Because I'm on the upslope and I have a high lofted wedge anyway. Yeah. So it was increasing the loft almost, on you the You're saying almost club. lean back a little bit more, but just make sure you're hitting. Correct. Swinging through the ball. Yes. So you're going to have to give it a little bit more speed with that 58. That was a really good shot. I think that went in. That might be pretty close. <laughs> all right, so Thomas, we've all been there. 
Um, this is at that point where you have maybe a little bit, like a tiny bit of green to work with. Maybe you have a bunker to hit over or a tree to hit over. Anyway, you got to get the ball high in the air. Or you have Drew to hit over. Or you have me to hit over, yeah. But you got to get the ball high in the air and land it without much rollout. The flop shot, in other words. Yep. Um, how does somebody get that done? What first are you, off, what's the instruction on that? First off, the club face has to be open. Yeah. First, you want to take your highest lofted club in your bag. So my, for me, it's my 60 degree wedge. Mm -hmm. I am actually going to probably open that up even more to make sure it turns into probably 70, 75 degrees of loft on it. I'm going to open that up pretty good. Yeah. I will aim a little bit left with my body, my feet and shoulders here. And I'm just trying to slice across it, leaving that face open coming through. Was that ball to kind of go okay. right up in the air. How about waiting with your feet? I mean, you, you back, you forward, how's that work? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty centered. I'm not forward. I'm definitely centered or maybe just a little bit, a little bit back. It really depends on the slope on okay. the shot we're hitting. Right where we're at, we're at a very, very slight upslope. It's pretty level here, so I'm going to be fairly kind of level. Okay. If I had an upslope that was pretty far and I had to get that thing really, really high, you could really hang back on that thing and you could hit that thing as high as you wanted there mm -hmm. too. But uh, here, this, was, this is about a 15-yard flop shot. We got about six or seven pieces of green to work yeah. with. Got to get it up quick, get that thing to land soft. All right, let's so, see it. I'm going to get you to stand up there. I'm going to stand up, you to stand, stand in the okay. way I like, just a little bit more of a challenge. Do you feel comfortable doing that? Uh, yeah, I do, knowing it's you. If knowing it was someone me? else, okay. I, I'm going to go like this, though. I'll just cover the important parts here. All right, perfect. What about the head? That's not important? Uh, there's you know, Some things are more helmet. important than others. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so when I'm hitting this shot, I'm trying to use the bounce of the club, and I'm just trying to have that club kind of just brush underneath the, the ground here. Am I, in it, the, am I in the line of the hole here? You can move a little bit to the right there. Okay. Now you're directly in my way. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit straight up over you, opening the club face up, open the feet up a little bit. Right up wow. over your head. Look at that. So, That's how it's done. Yeah, that's how it's done. So keep in mind, if you don't have the best lie, you know, if I had put this in like a little divot, you mm -hmm. probably, I probably wouldn't ask you to stand there. <laughs> I mean, I'm very confident very in you as a golfer, but like, yeah, if that was a bad lie or, you know, it's a bare dirt lie, for example, bare yeah. dirt, that yeah, would be Then you difficult. really have to use the bounce. Yeah. And if you open the club face up, use the, you, too much, you open, you add too much bounce, mm -hmm. it's not going to work out too much in your favor. But if the ball is sitting okay, you just kind of open the face up, so when I say open the face up, it's still pointing kind of at the target, but because your feet and your shoulders are a little bit left, okay. then you're just kind of leaving that face open, coming sure. through. And I'm not even thinking about you there. I'm just trying to picture my landing spot. And that might go in. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So it is kind of cutting across your body because you have your body aimed left. Naturally, your path is going to swing left, but your face is open. Mm. Was that thing to kind of just very interesting. Brush through the ground. Wow. Up in the air, and a little flop shot. Right. Do you want to hit one? I think I will. I think I'll All hit right. one. We've got one more ball here. Let's see. Uh, I got I'm not going to stand up there. Uh, no, I, I, I would <laughs> never do that. But let's, right. let's see it. So let's uh, give myself a realistic lie. I'm not just going to pop it up, you know. There we go. All right, open that. Open the face. Open up. the shoulders. Open, open the, the shoulders feet. up. Kind of cut across it almost. Cut you said. across it. And because we're cutting across it, we do need to have some speed there. If you don't yeah. swing hard enough, the ball is going to just club's going to go I underneath see. the ball. That was pretty good. All right, I'm on the green, not as close as you. Up there. Let's see one more, I'm gonna stand up here. Are you sure? I'm sure. I'm, just, I'm serious, man. <laughs> I'm sure, right. just give yourself a good lie. All right, I really don't want to. I'm, okay. not, I'm not even here. There you go. Definitely made sure you got all of me, <laughs> but that sure was I got good. over you. Yep. Yeah, so you got to imagine that I'm not even here. There's no tree even there. You're just kind of hitting a little shot. Mm -hmm. Imagine your flight up high, landing soft, using the bounce of the club. That's Open good stuff. the club face and cut across. Hmm. All right, Thomas, this is uh, an uncomfortable scenario for me. Ball's missed right of the green here. I'm on the down slope. Green is a little bit running away from me. Um, where do I start with this one? Where, do, where would you even start? you're playing this ball yeah so I mean it's pretty severely sloped uh, I like to set up with having your weight following the slope okay 
So because all the slopes go in this direction, we would actually have our weight kind of on, on our left side. It's gonna be pretty heavily, probably like 90% of your weight is gonna be on your, on your okay. left foot. Your shoulders are also gonna follow the slope too. So instead of having your shoulders like this, we're gonna also have our shoulders kind of following the slope. And then we're just kind of trying to keep that club fairly low coming through. And then we just kind of trust our normal shot essentially. Okay. The goal here is we're not trying to get too cute with it. Yeah. We need to make sure we get this thing at least on the green. So we want to make sure that we have enough energy to get it past here because we definitely don't, this is a downhill shot as well because yeah. we don't want to leave ourselves with downhill chip as well. So if I was going to hit this shot here as well, I would make sure that I'm trying to land this thing at least on the green. If I end up 10 feet past the hole, so be it. But mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I give myself a chance to get up and down. Yeah. I definitely don't want to leave myself another chip. So right. that's going to be the kind of priority. So setup wise, weight's definitely going to be on your on your left side. So very, very heavily on the, on the left side. It's going to feel like you're just following the slope, keeping that club fairly low. Weight on the left side. Basically, I could almost lift my right foot off the ground. Uh, shoulders a little bit lower. And then just kind of let it kind of gradually go under. Get there. Uh, yeah, that I'll was take pretty that. good. <laughs> okay. yep. I'll take that one. So let's see you do it here. All right. So I've got pretty much all my weight forward. Yep. All right. And then you're saying just kind of almost keep the club down, that kind of down yeah, you the just, slope. You're just, you're following the slope as best as you can. Keep those shoulders. So it's going to be probably like 90% of your weight is going to be on your left side. You keep that front shoulder down too? Yep. Okay. That was pretty good. I'll take it. Yep. You got what? Yeah, six or seven feet. It's rolling just a little bit. But remember, I mentioned we want to make sure we yeah. get this thing to the hole. Mm -hmm. You leave yourself an uphill putt there as well. Yeah. So that, that was that was pretty good. That one, you're you could play around with a little bit more, having that club face just a little bit more open. Okay. To try and guide that club underneath it a little bit. So that would maybe mm -hmm. cause it to kind of pop a little bit higher. Sure. But otherwise, it was it was pretty good. You got to keep in mind when that slope is going this direction. What's going to happen is the, 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 the amount of loft on the club is going to follow that slope. There's going to be less loft. So the sure. ball will kind of come out a little bit lower. So if you want to pop up a little bit more, you could open the face play up like a 58 degree wedge, then you maybe have to open it up still to maintain yep. that loft. But have all bit. your weight following mm -hmm. the slope is what gotcha. the important thing. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a tough out. shot. It's definitely it a very tough shot. You don't get it too often, believe it, believe it or not. But when you get it, you've got to make sure you're prepared for it. Mm -hmm. OK, so Thomas, I am uh, I got a tough lie here. I'm just off the green. Um, I'm not seeing that much of that golf. Yeah, I know it's 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 kind of deep in there. We got some thick rough here, um, so I mean, here's another question for you. I mean, you get a thick lie like this with. I mean, it's not a very far chip shot, but how do you handle you know a chip shot versus? I mean, a lot of golf courses it's not as thick as this where you can kind of get clean contact no matter what. This one I'm not so sure I'm going to get clean contact. Yeah, well, first off, I would say take some practice swings. Okay. So take some practice swings, kind of close to where the ball is. That kind of resembles it. Get the feeling of what it's kind of coming through like essentially so you notice it's thick mm -hmm. so get a good feel for how how the club is going to come through as you're as you're coming through i can feel that that club's getting it's getting shut down a little bit yeah so we need energy so we need energy for to get that club coming through if we don't swing fast enough the ball might just kind of pop here and not go far enough yeah but we don't want to swing with a lot of energy and all of a sudden swing all the way through and have that go, go fly in there as well so I like to do an exaggerated finish. Okay. So when I'm when I'm hitting the shot here, I have some energy on the backswing. I have a little bit more of a, a wrist hinge going back, and then I kind of just like almost like I'm kind of shutting it down a little bit. I turn my hips, but I'm just almost like I'm stopping and holding yeah. it off a little. It's bit. almost kind of like a chop. It's a little You're pop shot essentially is, is is the idea. So we have enough energy so the ball can pop out of the, the lie. Okay. But not so much energy it's going to go flying past right. the flag here. Okay. So let's try a couple here. Okay. Nice. That was really good. I totally just stabbed at it, but. Uh, it's gonna feel kind of like a little bit of a stab at it. Interesting. That, that was actually a really good shot. I mean, I don't think people, people realize actually how thick this, this rough <laughs> is right here. If I was to drop a ball here, I, my ball <laughs> literally is disappearing. Yeah. So this is, this is pretty thick. So it's kind of like it's a chop. You know, fairly soft hands. Yeah. We're not trying to have a lot of aggression with it. But it's like you're getting a little bit steeper with the backswing. Weight maybe a little bit on your on your left side. Okay. 
I mean, that's not a bad shot out of that no, way. That's, I, mean, I mean, it's 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 not bad. The thing, the idea is it kind of popped out and, and came out nicely. It's once again, very very bad lie. Can't even see so it. Your top priority at this spot probably is just getting the ball out of that. Yep. Just like you're almost like you're almost kind of mm -hmm. just rehearsing a shorter finish with it. Let's see you do one more here. That's a pretty gnarly one as well. Nice. A little exaggerated finish. Didn't quite have enough energy yeah. on that one. That was pretty the close. Club got real caught in got this. Got really stuff caught up that on that stuff there too. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of rough you would kind of see in the U.S. Open, essentially. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you're not going to see it at every public course. No. But you do need to be prepared to know how to hit this yeah. shot when you get mm -hmm. in that circumstance, because I mean the ball was literally disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think is, is one thing. Just make playing. sure you're you know accelerating through the ball. That's pr priority number one, I'm sure, especially Correct. with this stuff. Make sure the enough energy there to you know make an impact yep. in the ground yeah and, and it's not to the point where you need to almost like like swing and and take a lot it's mm -hmm. just a little bit exaggerated finish to feel like it's just kind of popping out that mm -hmm. club's just sliding under the ball yeah. causing it to kind of pop up in the air and you're trying to mitigate the damage here too right i mean you're trying to not make your double or triple Correct. bogey out of this yeah i mean you've got to keep your expectations here you hit yourself in trouble a bogey from here is maybe not the worst worst thing yeah giving yourself a chance to make that 10 footer Mm -hmm. is also a great thing there as well. You yeah. might make that 10-footer for par and you'll be very happy mm -hmm. and knowing that you probably dodged a bullet out of this rough way. All right, well, Thomas, I uh, need your help again. Uh, I've kind of positioned myself here where I have a look at the green, but I can't hit my normal you know, swing and hit it launch in the air. I'm going to have to keep it low under some branches here, under some more leaves out there. So um, what, uh, you know, hitting it, basically it's a punch shot, right? So yep. what is your process in deciding, you know, what club to hit, but also kind of where to aim and, and how to play the shot? Well, first off, I shot the distance. It's 123 yards. Okay. So you have to visualize how that ball is going to get there without hitting any of these branches. Yeah. So then you have to pick a club that you know is going to stay low enough underneath those branches. Mm -hmm. I also shot for you a distance, what it is, the distance to the fairway. So where the edge of the rough starts yeah. and the edge of the fairway starts, because we want to make sure we can carry the ball past the rough. Otherwise, if we land it in the rough, it's going to get caught up. Right. So our goal here is to try and picture something we can land in the fairway and have it kind of scoot up where it's going to dodge all these tree branches. So visualization yeah. is important. Okay. So uh, from here, I'm right off the bat. I'm thinking that I would probably hit like a seven iron. Okay. That's actually the, that's close, the thought I had in mind actually. Something close to that. Uh, it's you would want to try and keep it low. Mm -hmm. So to keep it low, you stand a little bit closer to the ball. You have your ball position a little bit back in your stance. Okay. Um, you can do all the power you can do to hit the ball low, but then pick out your landing spot. So we need to pick out our landing spot. I mentioned it's 123 yards. So you're probably going to try and land this maybe 80 yards. Okay. And then have that thing chase out the rest of the, rest of the way. Okay. I'll go grab my, my seven iron. That's actually the club I was thinking too when I was... You said uh, visualizing it, right? Yep. That was the club that I figured that would keep so it low enough, but still get it up there. Seven high. iron like, takes this branch out of play, yeah. and it's going to take those leaves out of play there too. Okay. Right. Keep in mind, we're in trouble. We're just trying to get ourselves back in play to give ourselves a yep. chance to make par. And so you said to keep the ball down a little bit closer to the ball, right? Yep. A little bit back in the stance. You, uh, you hit that thing really well. That actually might go in the hole. <laughs> the branches helped you out just a little bit yeah. on that one. That was, uh, that, yeah. was, that was pretty good. <laughs> I mean, we're talking you're about 10 feet away. Yeah. So that was, that was pretty good. Now, you got a little bit lucky. I did, because I was a little bit higher. I, hit, I think I hit it a little stronger than I initially wanted to. The leaves yep. helped me out and got, helped me get a little lucky, but it looks great on camera with <laughs> the ball right next <laughs> to the hole. But, um, yeah, and my recommendation to take those branches out of play, you can still do it with a seven iron is to stand a little bit closer to the ball. Okay. So when I mentioned standing pretty close, when you get closer, your club's gonna come back a little bit more vertical. Okay. So if you're a little bit more vertical, what's gonna happen is that ball is gonna stay a lot lower. Yeah. Imagine if you were gonna stand further away, that ball is gonna get kind of straight up into, uh, yeah, in the air. Yeah, I see, okay. So we stand a little bit, little bit closer, still picking out that spot. Probably, I'm not gonna try and carry as far as you're going, but I'm trying to have this thing to kind of chase out. Oh yeah. So that's the bull flight I, uh, that I like. Go. It's just, oh, it just oh. about got there, but I mean. That was really good. So I took 
this tree branch out of play. Mm -hmm. I took the other tree branch out of play. I didn't quite get it inside you. You well, got lucky. I got lucky. But, but keep in mind, mine was a lot lower and yeah. there's going to be a lot less mm -hmm. chances of catching that branch. And we've got yeah. OB right here on the right. Mm -hmm. It could go anywhere. Yeah, there's, yours is a way more predictable, right? Right. I hit mine and I did catch some branches, some leaves, and that's where you kind of lose control of where your ball's going. Yeah, so to kind of go over the shot again, visualize it first, pick out the club you know you're not going to hit the trees with. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. And then I would recommend technique-wise standing a little bit close to the ball, feeling like you're taking that club back a little bit more vertical. That's going to cause the ball to fly a lot lower. Okay. Hey, what are you doing here with 58 in your hand? I'm um, going to chip it in, maybe. Have you thought about uh, how difficult it is to hit the 58 from here and actually pull it off and hit it close? Uh, I haven't really thought about it. I just kind of do it. Just kind of do it. Okay. So, I'm not saying you can't pull it off. I'm just saying the odds are in your favor if you're going to either putt it from here or hit more of a chip and run to get the ball closer or even maybe think about holing it. I want to okay. see you hit the 60 here first, and then I want to I show you a different example here, how, how to hit the shot. Okay. We have, I think it's about 20 paces from where your okay. ball is to the hole. Well, you have about a pace or two paces to the, yeah. the edge of the green. So, I mean, what, usually when I have this, it's kind of a, it is sort of a bump run because it stays low, but it yep. will then check for me and the idea is that it kind of checks and then releases toward the hole a little bit. How do you, how do you get the ball to stay low with a 58? I basically, it, it actually, now this is probably not fundamentally correct, but there's a lot of wrist action where I'm kind of just, you know, keeping my hands way forward and then I'm okay. basically breaking my wrist, throwing the, throwing the wedge at the club with this or at the ball with a yeah. steep angle. Well, keep in mind if you have your hands forward, what you're doing is you're turning that 58 degree wedge into something that has less loft on it. Yes. So you're really kind of turning it. So I'm not saying you can't do it this way. I know Phil Milkerson, he likes to hit a lot of these shots here as well. I want to see you do it and I'm going to give you just a couple other examples of how to hit the shot. Okay. Alright, that was pretty tasty. So that was, that was pretty, pretty nice. Notice how far that bull flew. Mm -hmm. it, it basically flew almost halfway there. Yeah. If you didn't catch that shot perfect, there's a chance that you could catch it a little heavy and the ball would end up a little bit shorter, mm -hmm. or you catch it a little bit thin and you could end up all the green. Because you had to swing pretty hard at that yeah. to generate all the energy to get the ball to, to the hole. Yeah. I'm going to show you a couple of different options. So in this situation, I would probably either pull the putter. If I, if I have a pretty good lie through here, I'd probably pull the putter and, and putt it because I'm wanting to get the ball rolling fast. Okay. So the ball can roll and give a chance to get on, on in the hole essentially, or I may pull like a six or a seven iron and hit a little bump and run. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit both shots here. So I'll, I'll okay. first start out with the putter. So putter, you'll notice obviously it's going to basically, it's gonna roll the entire way. Notice how it's rolling, top spin, top spin, top spin, top spin. And you're inside of my I'm, shot. I'm inside of your shot. Now it did, kind of bounced a little bit. So yeah. notice how at first it kind of bounced and yeah. skid so a little bit. Yeah, so that's actually the, the sort of the, the mental block I have with yep. putting from the fringe is that, I mean, this is actually some good grass right here, but you know, you get other places, other courses, there's, the grass can be kind of iffy on the fringe. Yep. And I don't like the idea of my ball bouncer being affected by that. It's kind of a, a lot of the reason why I rarely putt from the fringe unless I'm kind of right next to the green. Okay, so that wasn't probably the best roll for the fringe. It caused my ball to come off about two feet short. Another option is to take that fringe completely out of play, is to play a club that's got a little bit more loft than the putter and have the ball kind of land here and then roll out. Okay. So I grab my six iron. So this is, this is a six iron. I'm gonna hit the same, pretty much the same speed with regards to straight back and straight through. And my goal here is just to get the ball rolling. To so notice how that yeah. Landed here, mm -hmm. and then it kind of rolled all the way there. Yeah. If I was to catch that a little bit thin, it still kind of would end up the same kind of spot. If I was going to catch it a little fat, it still okay. would kind of release out. If you catch yours a little thin yeah. or a little fat, it probably isn't going to end up as close as, as those other yeah. ones did there too. Yeah. You know, I, I, it's it's. I mean, to be honest, I would never consider anything really other than my 58 degree wedge for anything inside 100 yards. Yep. And I certainly wouldn't consider a six iron for anything right around the green like this. But I mean. 
I think, so what, essentially what you're saying is get the ball rolling as soon as possible. Correct. Yeah, okay. absolutely get the ball rolling, especially when you got 20 paces and you're just on, on the fringe. So let's talk about the technique just a little bit here. So first thing is you want to stand pretty close to the ball. You want to have your weight on, on, your, on your left side. Hands are forward. And essentially your goal here is to land this thing on, yeah. on the ground and have it kind of roll towards the hole. And I got that a little bit heavy, but that might go in. <laughs> so it looks like you yeah. choked way down on that too. It was like you're. You yeah, I'm your gripping. Hands on the so because this is a six iron, I'm not going to grip it up here because it's going to cause me to stand very, very far oh, I away. See. Okay. Because I'm standing a little bit closer. Yeah. I'm okay. standing a little bit closer. So just grab your. What, what other iron do you have here? I got a. I do have the six. Believe you got the six iron. Just I want to see you try to do that here. just a couple of times. Okay. So as I mentioned, I you want to have the ball land around this area here. So I'm actually going to put a little target. I got my Thomas Campbell Tor Van second swing poker chip. Okay. So that's kind of your, your target here. And that may not be directly on the line of the, of the target, but it's pretty close. I want you to feel like the ball lands right around this area. Okay. And then I put the ball a little bit back in the stance. A little back forward. in the stance, wait a little bit forward. And I'm almost, yeah. Very nice. That was excellent right there. Look at that. You got a tap in. Wow. Hmm. See one more. See another good one here. Notice how the ball kind of landed right around the spot. It did, yeah. Very good. You kind of that one you kind of hung back on just a little bit, so but even still, for a miss hit, it yeah. still well, it kind of got up there. Because yeah, I, I did miss that one, and it's still I have you know a very makeable putt. And then it's just weird because when I hit that first one, it's you know a foot maybe past the hole. Um, yeah. But it, it felt like I barely even you know, did anything to, like, it's, it's a lot of pop off the iron that I'm not quite used to. I thought I left it 15 feet short. Yeah, I mean, I would work on it a little bit, definitely go to a chipping green and work on the technique, but I think long term, hitting a six iron from here as opposed to 60 from here, or 58, I have a 60 mm -hmm. degree in my, in my bag, would not be the, the, the right play. I'm not mm -hmm. saying you can't pull it off, you can probably pull it off two out of ten times, but I think eight out of ten times you're going to be closer with the okay. six iron. Interesting. Or, the putter off the fringe if you don't have like a little ridge or maybe you're very, very close to the fringe. Yeah. But this gives you options around the green. You don't always have to use the 58 from every single mm -hmm. lie. All right, well, Thomas, I learned a lot right there. Um, and it's actually, some of those scenarios are for me, like even like hitting a punch shot, that's something I have to deal with frequently um, as someone who's not super accurate off the tee. Um, but then even some of those short game things that you just don't really think too much about, like, you know, whether it's an upslope or a downslope maybe, like, a lot of times you don't really think about the effect of, you know, for example, if you're hitting on an upslope, how you're actually adding loft to your club and vice versa on a downslope. So things like that, that, you know, obviously you're well aware of and you know how to handle in on a day-to-day -day basis, but that's not something I even think about. Yeah, you've got to make sure you can get that club face to be square to the target so yeah. the ball can go straight. But you also got to think about the loft and the ball flight. Mm -hmm. If you're hitting on an upslope and you're trying to hit the ball under the tree branches, there's a good chance it's going to get up there and yeah. go too high. Uh, so that's why it's important to pay attention to how much loft you should have on the club to get it in the most optimal window, whether that's a punch shot or that's even maybe just a little chip and run yeah. as well. Yeah, that was another one too, where chip and run, that'll be something I really have to work on too, I think, because I have to get used to hitting, you know, I'm used to a 58 degree wedge swing, which takes more energy to get the ball to the hole from 50, you know, yards away or 50 feet away. Um, whereas with a six iron in that particular example, it's just going to be a little putting stroke that's going to get the ball there. Yeah, I think most important thing is, is practice it. it. It's not going to be a quick fix. Go out to the, the short, go out to the chipping green, go out, get some pitch shots, get some chip shots, and just get used to the feel. You'll be really surprised how quick you'll get used to how your hands react, how your body reacts, how your eyes react to how far you're supposed to hit a shot. Mm -hmm. You just got to practice it and get used to it. Yeah, well, thank you, Thomas, for that. And I know the golfers will enjoy that one as well that are watching this. Um, but look for more of this in the future. Uh, we kind of, you know, we came out to the golf course. We played some holes. We just found out, hey, what type of scenario am I going to get myself into? And had Thomas help me out with it. So we'll do this again in the future. And uh, if you guys, again, if you like this video, give this video a like, leave a comment below, and subscribe to our channel. Again, we'll be doing this more in the future uh, where Thomas can give his expertise for us. So, Thomas, again, thank you for all that. Um, I have already, like I said, I learned a lot there. You're going to get your handicap down in no time. <laughs>